No, I need your help. I find myself attracted to Captain Don. Well, there's the end of something simple. I don't want to lose you, Larry. What we have is about the only thing that makes sense to me. Land's brightest new star. I don't think you have a snowball's chance <laughs> in hell. <laughs> We've got 10 seconds. Right. Can you go back and see if he has a... All right, bring it home, Bill. <laughs> bring it home. It's a hundred and some flights. Nice work, Bill. Get way up there. There you go. Really? Get up there. Whoa! Oh, nice work! The sunset <laughs> on my last day here. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I love you. I don't know. I need your help. I find myself a train. Well. I wonder if this is the reel that got Bill hired at CNN. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend and former morning show anchor Bill Weir has done so many things since leaving this place. He's been an anchor and author, and he's watched uh, his uh, daughter grow up. become uh, He became a father again to a young son. He's currently CNN's chief climate correspondent, and he has a new book out inspired by his little boy. It's called Life as We Know It Can Be. Stories of people, climate, and hope in a changing world that confronts the worry and wonder of climate change. Well, Bill, good to see you. Hey, Bill. Memories. <laughs> <laughs> Misty watercolor memories. Don't cry. <laughs> Hi, my friends. I love you guys. I it, love seeing you. How it, are you? It's good to see you. You know, it's nice to know, coming from a place where we didn't read books, that now you're actually writing them. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Well, it took me uh, way too long. It, I should have written a book, t honestly, 20 years ago, but I'm lazy. <laughs> and, uh, and that's pretty much it. I'm lazy. Did you fall into this, the whole environmentalism passion by accident because that was the job opening? I don't remember you being such an environmentalist <laughs> when you were here. He was talking about well, bloopers, I, sports bloopers uh, when he was here. Exactly. Life was much simpler. I was a lot more fun at parties uh, back in the day uh, before I started pondering the end of life as we know it. Uh, I did, you know, enjoy going up to the Boundary Waters with my dad. Uh, and backpacking in Colorado all my life. And my dad was the kind of guy who would take me out to this beautiful vista, you know, in a desert and go, see this, isn't this great? Just wait until some a-hole builds a golf course here. Mm. And so I, it's, it, it filled me with this, you know, sense of wonder for the natural world, but also worry that if we're not careful, it can go away. Mm. And honestly, it wasn't, I, I really became, you know, climate guy, when they gave me the wonder list at CNN, and I got to travel to the wonders of the world to see what will be left of them when Olivia is my age in 2050. And boy, I tell you, if I could share my passport and expense account with everybody, yeah. I think we'd have a much different view of the world and our place in it. And yeah. so, yeah, that's why, that's why, but again, it was, it was a lot more fun back in the day, you know, trying to get a Dennis Rodman. Sound yeah. the, the show was great. Uh, we really enjoyed watching it, but let's, let's talk uh, environmentalism here for, for a second. What you, you've heard the questions before, why should America bear the brunt of the cost when India and China uh, contribute as much, if not way more and, and don't seem motivated to? Well, um, first, there's the moral responsibility, Larry. If you came to my house party and did the most trashing of the house, <laughs> historically, I'd expect you to kick in uh, a commensurate amount for mm -hmm. the cleanup. I mean, we've led the world in the technologies and the fuels that built the modern world and, and expanded lifespans. Uh, but now we realize that we put too much of this stuff, this planet cooking pollution, the result of our, of our growth, the cost of that is, is ruining everything we know and love and shortening lifespans now. And so given our big leadership role, our technology, shouldn't we be the ones to try to come up with fixes and share them with the rest of the world? And China is actually putting on record amounts of clean energy. India is leapfrogging in many ways the mistakes of the Industrial Revolution. And uh, with the developed world's help, they could sort of skip fossil fuels the way they skipped landlines and went straight to cell phones. And right now, Solar power and onshore wind are the two cheapest forms of energy humanity has ever mm. invented. And we've just been burning the cheap stuff, whatever was yeah. available, whether it was whales or coal or kerosene. But now the, the alternatives, the other tools, the cleaner tools, the more sustainable, healthier community tools are right in our hands right now. It's just a matter of changing the story. They say that Gen Z is the most really tuned into this of all the generations, but they also have this term called catastrophizing, where kids do a lot of worrying. And you're writing a book like this, do you worry? It just scares people to death, and, and you're preaching to the same choir that already knows this story? No, not actually, I was hoping to change that conversation. 
uh, because for one thing, the kids, this generation deserves a very clear eyed assessment of what is happening to their planet in real time. And I'm I have the luxury of going and visiting these places and seeing the effects. And people in the United States are feeling are going to feel it more and more. It's showing up in insurance rates in, in California and Florida, showing up in our food prices when you can't ship grain down the Mississippi in a reliable way anymore. But at the same time, there's all this amazing innovation that's happening that is unlocking a, a, a better world for them. And Dr. King didn't say, I have a nightmare you know, during civil rights. He said, I have a dream. And in this space, we don't talk enough about, gee, wouldn't it be cool if, if the school buses that picked up our kids you know, ran on sunlight instead of diesel? So mm -hmm. we're not breathing these fumes. And then they could plug the school into the bus at night and, and help power classrooms after dark. There's so many better possibilities out there that are there for the taken right now. And I think I'm, what I'm trying to do is, is to get this generation engaged with each other into nature, turning that anxiety into action. I think a lot of the reason they're anxious is that the grown-ups aren't talking about it yeah. in a reasonable way about what's really happening and all of the amazing possibilities uh, for a better future. Well, if you ever feel the need to just slow down and do stupid stuff again, stop on by. <laughs> We're still here 28 years later, Bill, doing the same stupid stuff. So make you feel better yeah. about yourself. <laughs> no, are you kidding me? My years with you guys are, are among, I talk, I write about it in the book, uh, among my favorite in my life. I, I still love you guys. And, and, uh, and the, the relationship you have with your viewers in Chicago, I was talking to Jennifer Schulze yesterday on the radio, the boss who put us all together oh, yeah. on the yeah. day. Yeah. And how how she chose each of you and, and how we got thrown together, the values she was trying to espouse and the relationship you have with that audience in Chicago. Uh, I was proud to be part of it for just a minute. Well, congratulations Congrats, on the Bill. book, Bill. Thanks, Larry, Robin. Say hi to Paul for me. We sure will. The book is Life As We Know It Can Be, Stories of People, Climate, and Hope in a Changing World. For more, follow Bill on X and Instagram. Thanks, Bill. Talk to you later, Bill. Thanks, Robin. Take care.